What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. That's all of a sudden, at age, what, 60? He's just going to break bad? So, you know, I just realized that <laughs> I've I seen your, wa your Walmart video, and I just realized, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ain't, ain't this the same guy supposed to be talking to about the cop? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. All right, Raymond in the building. My guy, what's, what's going, going on, on there, buddy? How you doing? Ah, uh, man, I can't call it, man. I can't call it over here. Just trying to, just trying to mosey on down these streets, man. But uh, let's go ahead. Yeah, and, I feel you. I feel you. Let's go ahead and jump into it, man. So, the first time I met you, uh, I've seen your TikTok video, and you was talking about the the reason why you you left uh, being a. Uh, uh, a civil servant, you know, a patrol officer. Uh, uh -huh. So you you was a cop in your past life, huh? Yes, I, I, I was a cop for five and a half years. All right, all right, uh, Raymond, man. Get, you know, tell us, uh, tell us a little bit of background. You know, throughout the five years, did you did you see any action? Did you it would did you shoot man, your gun uh, at any time? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I never, I, I never shot my gun. I've, I've come close a few times, um, but I was, I was able, we were able to deescalate the situation. Um, but for the agency I worked for, we saw a lot of stuff, um, a lot of, a lot of stuff. Um, I wish, I wish we were able to show you some of that body camera footage because I've seen some wild stuff. Wow. Well, what, uh, what, what, uh, what city, state, uh, ordinance that you uh, worked out of? Okay, so I worked in a. I'm 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 from Augusta, Georgia, and I worked for Richmond County Sheriff's Office. Oh, okay, okay. Which, which is the sheriff's office that handles Augusta, Georgia, Richmond County. Yeah. Okay. Now, now let me ask you this, and I I, I don't want to sound you know I I don't want to sound offensive or anything like that, but especially being in Georgia, uh, you being a minority cop, did did you face any, uh? adversities down there while, while you was a, a cop from inside inside the agency yes sir uh no uh, honestly no um the agency is very diverse we have white black hispanic lots of male um, officers lots of female officers tall short skinny fat taxis no taxis literally nobody was discriminated against it it was a nice mix of uh people um so there, there was really no discrimination um my my agency is really good about if, if you're willing to come to work and do your job um you know they're they're going to look out for you some people might say oh that, that they didn't look out for me they said this or they did this or they did that to me and you're not always going to get what you want, but that's right. That's any career. So you can't say the job is out to get you because you don't get what you want all the time. Um, but I mean, if you work for it and, you know, eventually a slot opens up and, you know, you show that you can handle the position, they'll give it to you. All right. All right. Well, you know, I'm from uh, Cleveland and Ohio and, you know, I got a, I got a handful of uh, cop friends, uh, a few of them, as you know, you you went five years without shooting your gun. Actually, my guy just retired from the department without even have to you know without even have to shoot his gun. So there is <laughs> there is cops out there yeah. that never had to pull their weapon or shoot their gun for so, any reason. So so actually, statistically speaking, majority of people, most officers will go their entire career without ever having to. The, the media makes it look like, oh my God, people are out shooting and all this stuff all every single day Facts. and whatnot. And yes, it, it does happen. But if you look at a grand scheme of things over the entire country, let you know, and I'm just going to give some, you know, random numbers. Let's just say that there are, I don't know, let's just make up a number. A thousand officer involved shootings in a, in a year, in a calendar year. You know, to the general public, you're like, wow, that is a lot. Well, now you have to take into account, like, there are possibly, what, 2,500 agencies across the entire United States. And on average, some run more, some run less, but I'm going to say an average. On average, every one of those agencies is probably going to run around 
400,000 calls a year. So when you take 2,500 times 400,000, when you put that into perspective, how many calls there actually are versus how many shootings there are, that makes you say, okay, well, it's actually really not happening that often. Now, if you, you know, if you crunch those numbers using the calculator, if out of those number of calls, there's only a thousand shootings or a thousand officer involved shootings, then you're going to say, okay, well, actually there's really not that much of it going on. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. Facts, man. Facts. So as a cop, um, for the five years, what was some of the, what was some of the craziest stuff that you, uh, that you've seen? Um, I'll give a few examples. Um, I've seen car accidents where one prime example, why I saw one accident where a lady actually was deciding to try to go around a semi truck on a two lane road with a double solid yellow line and it was on a curve and she just was tired of, of being behind that truck. So when she went on the oncoming side, she didn't know there was another truck coming around. So she swerved back over and ended up hitting the uh, front of the other, the truck that she was trying to get around. That caused her to spin and go broadside with the truck that was coming towards her in the opposite way. Wow. And that truck ended up hitting her and flipping that car through the air and wrapped that car around a telephone pole. Wow. That car was wrapped so tight around the pole that she was suspended like 10 feet up in the air, wrapped around this pole that it ended up leaning over. And um, by the time we got the car down and got her out, her body was vaporized. I mean, it, there was no bones, no nothing. It, it was just mush. Mm. Let's see, right, um, right, right there, you know, these two lanes. And I, I've seen a couple of near misses myself, man. You know, they, they come around me, you know, the speed limit is, speed limit is what it is, 55 or whatever, whatever. And then I got them coming around and then oncoming truck is like, it's like five feet in front of them and it just barely makes it. Like, it, it's, it's crazy, man. But wow, that's. What, 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 you seen that, what, what, how, how did that affect you, bro? Um, so when you first start, um, this stuff kind of, it, it, it hits you hard because you go from watching TV shows and you're just like, oh man, that's wild. You know, thinking that you, nothing like that in real life happens. But then when you start seeing some of the stuff that happens, it, it blows your mind. And then after a while, I I don't want to necessarily say you build a tolerance on, you know, what's but, what I'm looking for. But you have you, you to. You build though. a tolerance to it, but you have to. Um, you're still sensitive to it, but you learn to deal with it. Um, you, you learn to deal with it while you're there, process it, do what you've got to do to secure the scene, help the people that are there, try to calm them down, try to try to make it a better environment to deal with for everybody else that's there because you're dealing with the civilians. So you help get them calm down, figure the situation out. And then later on you process it yourself, you know, with your coworkers, some agencies offer, you know, counseling and therapy sessions. Um, you, you find ways to cope with it, hopefully helpful, uh, healthy ways. But um, yeah, you, you find the ways to cope with it and deal with it. And uh, you just, you just go from there. Wow. Have you, now, let me ask you this, you know, being, being a minority cop and everything, uh, I, I'm assuming you, you made some traffic, traffic stops. Am I correct? Absolutely. Have you ever came up to one of these camera cultures that asked you the pivotal question of, yeah, I, I don't have to show you my ID. <laughs> uh, well, lucky enough, I can honestly say, no, I have not. Not that specific question. I have had people try to play the word games and stuff like that, you know, to try to get out of it or to try to trip you up. And I just bring it back to the basics. I'm like, look, we don't have to do this. Let's not get crazy. I'm stopping you because you ran this, this stop sign. Let's not try to play these word games. You ran the stop sign. 
it's, it's on the dash camera in the car. Let's just go ahead and proceed with this citation <laughs> and you'll have your day in court. Right. Uh, one of the biggest things, one of the biggest things I've learned in law enforcement, um, and it's one thing I definitely tell a lot of officers that are new, and I'm sure any officer that hears this is going to agree. One of the biggest things that will help you be successful as a cop is learning to de-escalate situations. Um, because some people will start at 100. You can't go into a situation meeting them at 100 because now the whole thing started at 100. Mm -hmm. If they're at 100, you stay at level 5 or 10 and try to bring them down to you. Don't let them get you worked up because when you start getting worked up and losing your cool, that's when you start making mistakes and doing stupid stuff. Mm. Facts. Okay, okay. So what what made you become a cop in the first place? Uh, so that ha we have to go back to uh, a little bit further back. Um, back in the time. <laughs> so, yeah, there, there's, so there, yeah there's, there's a little story, there's a story behind this. Uh, so my dad is a truck driver. He's been driving for 30 plus years. Um, so I'm, I've been around the industry my whole life. Uh, my whole life, I wanted to grow up and be a fighter pilot. So, um, I ended up going to college and, uh, I was actually went to a military academy, went to the Naval Academy and I was, I was a dual major, uh, up there in aeronautical and mechanical engineering. And I ended up getting the flight physical to see if I could actually become a fighter pilot. And, um, you know, like, you know, how's your vision? They did the vision test. It was correctable beyond 2020. I just wear glasses. Um, they, you know, the, the physical side of it, my body could physically handle the forces of flying fighters. Um, however, because of how tall I am, I'm 6'5", but the way my body is, I, I guess, proportioned, I have very long legs. So basically sitting in the cockpit wasn't going to work for me. Wait, wait, um, wait, wait. Oh, so, hold up. Oh, wait, wrong button. Wait. You <laughs> you you you're you're six five, bro, with long legs. Yeah. And you wanted to be a fighter pilot. Yes. I, ever since I was a little kid, that's that's all I ever wanted to do. You um, you you should so see yeah. my mouth right now. I, my mouth is like literally <laughs> dropped to the floor, bro. Like, wait. <laughs> you're you you six yeah. five long legs and you want to be a fighter pilot like normally kids yeah. Yeah, nor, I mean, norm, normally kids your 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 height is like yo i'm 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 straight to the pros forget exactly. for, forget the <laughs> for, forget college i e lebron james i'm straight to the pros bro <laughs> Like, <laughs> uh, I mean, I'm, 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 yeah, I'm I, listen, I, I, I am time. enjoying, I'm, I'm enjoying this because you went from, you, 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 you went from, you went from a cop to being the truck driver and then we'll get into the Walmart stuff later. But bro, six, five yes. long legs and you decided to go to be a, okay. So they, they said that because of the long so, legs, they kind of like, you know, bust your bubble. So are we going to the pros? Yeah, so, what's, um, what's up? So I was just like, um, all right. Uh, my, my family, my mom, mainly my mom and dad, they're just like, and I tell you this, I'm like, Raymond, you are probably one of the dumbest people I have ever met in my life. <laughs> so I, um, to, to me, to me, a lot of, to me, being a commissioned officer in the military is um it's it's not just a job it's you're you're leading people and if i wasn't going to be happy being a commissioned officer i felt like i was going to make the people's lives that worked for me miserable because i wasn't happy right so i ended up leaving the military academy and i ended up going to middle Georgia college where i dual majored in air traffic controlling and commercial aviation so i actually did start flying okay however when i when i left I wasn't able to find a job in the uh, industry because when you graduate college um, with flying, you only have but so many hours. The airlines want you to have way more than that. So you have to get hours and experience 
somewhere else. So Wasn't it's able not to find a job so, doing that. So is it? So what? What you're saying is, it's kind of light trucking, but it's not light trucking, considering the fact that you know you can get in with somebody with you know with limited experience, but with flying, if you don't have all those hours, they won't let you in. Period. That that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. You have to get experience somewhere else, and then once you hit whatever airline you want to go to their minimum prerequisite then you can go ahead and apply and then they'll pick you up wow i didn't know that you know, so, I, so I, um i didn't yeah, know that I, that's that's good to know right there yeah yeah so um i was like well shoot what am i going to do so i was at home working part-time chilling and whatnot and my brother is also a truck driver um, but he was also, he actually worked for the agency at the time, uh, as a cop. And I was, you know, just working part-time partying, hanging out with friends and whatnot. And he was like, Raymond, how about you supply to the department? And I was just like, I don't want to do that. And I was like, that's lame. I was like, I was just seeing Fruitvale Station. And he just started laughing. He's like, Raymond, don't be like that. It's not like that. He's like, and besides, he's like, if you want to make a difference, you can so I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. So I uh, went down and applied, and um, yeah, the agency hired me, and um, I actually ended up falling in love with doing the job. I did not think I was going to love oh. it like I did. It was like it's just oh. something to do, and I actually ended up loving it. Okay, so okay, so we skip we we skip the pros, but you you love being a cop. You five years in. I, I mean, e even though your, you know, even though your family, your brother and your father, they was they was truckers. Don't understand why you didn't, you know. No, no, follow. no. My 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 brother was a my oh. brother was a cop at the time. Oh, oh, your brother yeah. was a cop. He was oh, a cop at the oh, time. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But your your father was your father was the trucker. Yeah. Oh, okay. So why? Why leave? I mean, was you wasn't forced out, wasn't you? It doesn't no, sound like no. you was. So, um, I, no, so I ended up uh, meeting my child's mother um, while I was uh, in law enforcement. And um, things are going great. Things are going well. And um, he ended up losing a job and getting pregnant at the same time. Um, so it went from two-income household down to a cop salary trying to make up that difference plus bringing a new child into the world. So needless to say, you know, something needs to give because everybody already knows cops are severely underpaid. Right. And that's across the country. So everybody out there, all the agencies hearing this, pay your officers better. <laughs> they deserve it. You know it. Uh, yo, 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 kids, moms, uh, was she a cop or she was working outside the, the agency? <laughs> Oh no, she 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 was working outside the agency. She had a completely different career. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because I, I I was about to say she got fired for being pregnant. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, so cool, cool. All right. Um, okay. Um, had to take you know, to had to take care of the family and everything. Pros is out the window. Uh, so. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, I'm going to assume so, the, I, I'm going to assume you had a had a sat down chat with your your father before you decided to come into trucking. So, yeah, we you know, I was just like, you know what, I'm going to become a truck driver. And I mean, now I will say it is something I always wanted to do, but I always said I would do it like, you know, how you have some guys who come into the industry when they're like 60 and they're like, I've retired from my regular job. I just want right, to be, right. you know, over the road trucker. Right. So that was my plan. Um, not that I hate trucks. I actually love trucks. Um, I love trucking. Uh, it's just, I want to do it later on in life. Um, so, you know, that was, that's why I left the department to start driving. And my brother, he, um, you know, he was like, I just want to start making more money. And so we decided together, like, Hey, you know, how about we both go to, PDL school together and we started looking up companies that would work out best for us and um we both found rail transport you know we compared them against prime and other companies and stuff and we felt like rail transport was where we uh, wanted to go so we both signed up 
They got us in the same class together down in Con- at the Conley, Georgia location. Mm-hmm. And uh, we went to CDL school together out there. And the rest is history from there. Both been driving. All right. All right. So Rail took you guys on. Uh, did, did you uh, complete the, you know, they, they want you to stay there for at least a year in order for them to, you know, outright pay for your CDL. So did you complete the, uh, yes. the, the obligation? Yes. So they, at the time, I can't say it's the same now, but at the time, their uh, requirement was 120,000 miles um, for one year, uh, whichever one comes first. Um, and I, I mean, I stayed out because when I, when I first started, I was only making 30 cents per mile. <laughs> So needless to say, at 37 miles, you're going to have to run to make some money. Right. Um, so I actually ended up completing my contract in like 10 and a half months. But Rail, Rail was a good company. So there was no need for me to feel like, hey, I got to leave. Um, so I stayed with Rail. Uh, and then I said, you know what? I want to give this flatbed stuff a try. So uh, I transferred over to the flatbed side. And I was over there for a while. And I said, damn, look at those heavy haul guys, man. I want to get like them. So after that, I looked into a company called ATS, Anderson uh, Transportation Services. Yeah, I just did. Uh, I just Minnesota. I, I just did a a, 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 M, a MTC call on them. How how was your experience okay. with them? I can say without fail. After driving for rail, ATS. Walmart and veteran carriers, um, ATS to this day is still my favorite company to drive for. Um, all the comp now, now that being said, every company I've driven for is, is yes, sir. It's 50 feet long. Okay. So yeah, um, I'll, I'll move it up. So I'll take this up and move it. Yeah. Cause it's a 53 foot trailer. And we don't want to make it oversized. Is it, it y'all want me to tarp this? Is this going to be tarp? Okay, so let me let me rearrange some of this stuff, and then um, we'll go from there. So um, um, yeah, all the companies I've done for were really good. Uh, they they all are. So I don't want anybody here just to be like, oh, well, dang, those other companies must be trash. They're not trash. It's just o- overall, in my my opinion, I feel like. Um, ATS was the best company I've driven for. Okay. And um so you yeah. so you would suggest you, you to remain some stuff. Oh, okay. You you would suggest ATS then to to new drivers. Ab- absolutely. Ab- uh well you, ATS requires some experience before you can go over there. But to uh somebody that got a little bit of experience wants to stay over the road. Who wants to go to a company that's going to pay them um, some pretty good money? Um, actually, not gonna lie, it's phenomenal money. Uh, I would definitely highly recommend uh, ATS. All they right. have a van division, uh, but they also have a specialized division. And the beautiful thing about their specialized division is that they um, they give you the opportunity to work up to heavy haul. So, um, if, you know, calling some incredible crazy loads that you see on YouTube and stuff, if that's what your desire is, you can go to ATS and they'll actually work you up and train you to get to that point to where you actually have the knowledge and skill set and ability to haul those kind of loads safely. And they'll teach you all on the company's dime. And, I mean, there's no, you don't owe them money, none of this kind of stuff. That's just what the company does. All right, all right. So ATS is uh sounds like a good company from a former driver, guys. All right, man. Let's uh let's talk about the elephant in the room, bro. Let, let's talk about this video right okay. here. Hold on. All right, guys, I'm gonna make this uh quick. Um sorry if I sniffle or cough. I'm I got a little yeah, cold too, going too, on. Too much to sniffling, bro. Um a lot of y'all been asking about hi Miranda. A lot of y'all been asking about why I uh, left Walmart and decided to go to another company. Um, so I guess gotta give you a little bit of a backstory to break it down so you can truly see. 
So, um. All right. All right. So, okay. while everybody is, is, is jumping to Walmart or everybody is, you know, saying that that's their end goal right here, here you are already at Walmart and you left, bro. Like, yeah. what happened? So, um, let let's let's talk about that. This is actually something. This is actually something that I, I want to actually drop on my YouTube channel and uh, talk to people about because it's something that I don't think a lot of people really think about before going to Walmart. So, um, sorry about that. I'm trying to. No, you around. good. You you good. Make you load, load I, me up properly. I I I tell you what. You you what? you you want to do that right quick and then and and then call me right back. Yeah, give, give me about ten minutes. I'll call you back. Yeah, and yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll we'll, con we'll we'll continue from there. All right. Where we uh Walmart. Okay. We're talking about Walmart. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So all right, so you uh you left Walmart. So let's let's pick it up where we left off at. Okay, so um uh well I wanted to start with this real quick. I so I drive for veteran carriers now. I said ACS is my favorite company, however, I don't want to blow shade at veteran carriers. It is a great company so far. For all I know, I could be here for a month and I end up saying this is my new favorite company, but I've only been here. This is my second week. So okay. I can't really give it a fair shake just yet. So I don't want anybody to be like, whoa, why would you go to a company that sucks? I haven't been here long enough to say it is my favorite or isn't. I got to give it time. All um, right. But back to, back, to the Wal back to the Walmart thing. So um, Walmart is a great company to work for. Outstanding. You can make very good money while being there. Um, one thing I actually hated was when that article leaked talking about you can make 95 to 110,000 people are like, that's it. Well, before we even got that huge pay raise, you had plenty of drivers who are making that and more already under the old pay plan. The new pay plan just made it easier for you to get that and actually go well beyond it. Um, so. That being said, uh, you, you can make very good money working for Walmart. The thing is, though, however, uh, for myself, um, like I mentioned in that video, when I was on for ACS, I didn't have a car note because, well, I was over the road. I didn't need a car. My wife had a car. I'd come home. That was the family car. Let, let, um, me, let me stop you so, right here because a lot, of, a, a lot of stuff that you said in your video kind of resonated with me in a way. So I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that in a minute, but go ahead and continue. Okay. So, um, so I'll, everybody's story is a little bit different. Some people might left, leave a company where they're only making $1,100 a week and then they'll go to Walmart and they start making 18, 19, 20, $2,300 a week. So, for them, purchasing a car, you know, adding on all those extra expenses that come with driving to and from work when you work for Walmart, that would make sense to them because they're still making a massive profit. But for me, when I was with ATS, I was making Walmart level money already. I was actually making some some weeks. My my take home with ATS for some weeks was more than what Walmart drivers would gross in two weeks. Mm. Okay. ATS pays like that. Um, so, so for me, wait, so so hold up, hold, hold up, my guy, hold up, man. I mean, now you you got my mouth open again, bro. Why? Uh, is, why did you leave ATS for Walmart if you was making that level of money? Because you're over the road, and uh, the wife and I, we just. We wanted to move to a different phase of life, you know? Oh, okay. Instead okay. of being, because, you know, I, ATS lets you go home when you want to go home, but being over the road driver, you know, as well as I do, 
you got to play the game. And that game requires you to stay out um, if you want to make really, really good money. And um, I, I was staying out, you know, anywhere from a month to two months at a time. And um, so she's like, you know, could you find something that has you home a little bit more? And I'm like, all right, that's fair. That's cool. So, of course, being over the road, your checks are up and down, but you typically have a DC average. With Walmart, your checks, you're going to relatively, if you learn how, how the system works and you run yourself properly um, and you know how you work, you're going to be able to basically say every, every two weeks, you should be able to come within a certain gross number of how much you've made. You, you know. You know you're going to average making seventeen, eighteen, two thousand, twenty one hundred dollars a week. You know you're going to make that, right? Um, so you can almost it's, it almost feels like your salary. You know, one week you might make twenty one hundred, the next week you might make nineteen fifty. You know, the week after that you might make twenty fifty. But as you can see, those numbers are very close together. Very close together. It's, it, you can almost pretty much guess what you're going to make. Um, being over the road, that's just not the case. You have some weeks, the truck breaks down, you're on breakdown pay. Some weeks, you just don't get the good miles. Some weeks, you have ridiculously outstanding miles, and you just make a crap ton of money. So it just depends. Um, so to get back to uh, the, the top of the question at hand, so basically, um, going over to Walmart, I was like, all right, well, obviously, I'm going to need a car to get to my D.C. I live in Augusta, Georgia. So the DCs that were in my area, you have LaGrange, Georgia, uh, LaGrange, Georgia, which is a three and a half hour drive from Augusta, Monroe, Georgia, which is about two hours and 45 minutes, Douglas, Georgia, which is about three hours, uh, Paisley, South Carolina, which is about two hours and 45 minutes, and Shelby, North Carolina, which is three and a half hours. So as you can see, Augusta is smack dab in the middle where everything is far from you. The only DC that makes sense and that was close for me is Lauren, South Carolina, which is about an hour and 10 minutes away um, okay. in a okay. car. If I am slightly above the speed limit, we'll just leave it at that. So we leave. So, so we looking at an hour there in an hour, but bro, oh man, we, no, no, no. we got, three, we got to include, three we got, half to, we got to include traffic three with and that half too. Hours. Ooh. Yeah. So I'm looking so at we looking three at and a half to four hours drive to the door. So you're looking at seven hours. Well, I mean, well, three hours to get there because you're going to be gone for a week and then three hours yes. to get back. Okay. Okay. I'm thinking. Yes. Oh, bro. I know you couldn't do this on an everyday. Oh, no. Okay. It, oh, no, no, no. Not, not no. on every day. Uh -uh. Now. Go so, ahead. So here's what happened. I had to buy a car because obviously I can't take the only car we have to work and sit out in North Carolina. So I had to buy a car. We have kids. We have three kids and a fourth one on the way. So, needless to say, I have to buy an SUV because you can't fit four kids inside of a, a small car. So, but I have to buy an SUV. Oh, okay. So you, yeah. so, you already had a car, but it wasn't an SUV. No, I didn't have a car. I didn't need one. No, 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 no. I'm talking about your, the, your wife. You, didn't you say your wife had a car? She has a car. She at the time, yes, she has had a car. Oh, she. Oh, oh but at that the was the only car with. Yeah, that was the only car we had for the family at the time. Okay, but when you brought another car or the SUV, now did you still had yes. the other car? Yes. Oh, okay, 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 yeah. okay. So, you, so basically, you just gave the SUV to your wife, and you just took her car back and forth to work. Right. Uh, yeah. Depending on the week, some weeks I take mine, some weeks I take hers. But it, you know, it just depends on what we needed, what was going on with the family, you know. Right. Um. But yeah. But basically, that was how it would work. So now we have the new car note. Um. Now we have added car for car insurance. Right. So the car note four fifty. Right. The car insurance is now up to almost three hundred dollars two ninety eight. Right. But I'll say three hundred because insurance in Georgia is high. Right. And it's a Durango, a Dodge. So they're Crazy. as expensive as it is. Okay. So now now when you add that, so you have four fifty 
the three hundred for the um, for the insurance. That's seven fifty right there. Seven fifty. Now to spend fuel, to spend fuel between getting from Augusta to Shelby, Shelby back to Augusta, driving around Augusta on my home time because we're, we're going to do stuff as a family. We take vacations, you know, do what right. you do in your home. Right. You're spending all this money on gas. I was dropping anywhere from six to eight hundred dollars a wow. month in fuel. Mm. So as you can see, my monthly output of expenses went up significantly just to say I'm driving for Walmart. So, and on top now and on top of that, you when you live so far from your DC, you're missing out on a lot of home time because let's say uh, your off days are hypothet- I'm just gonna use an example, hypothetically Saturday and Sunday. If you get back to the yard on Friday, you're going to get back to the yard. You run the clock out probably 11, 10, 11 o'clock midnight. It's going to take you about 45 minutes to an hour to clean up the truck, seal the truck, do the paperwork, turn it in and whatnot. So you're looking at getting back on the road at around 1 o'clock in the morning on your first, on your first actual off day. Facts. Driving three and a half hours three back home. Hours. So I'm getting home at 4 30, 5 o'clock in the morning on my first off day. You got to get a little sleep. Right. Wake up, do something with the family. Right. Then that's Saturday. Sunday, you, you're, you're getting, getting ready for work ready again. To go back to work. You get, and then you have to go to bed at 6, 7 o'clock in the afternoon because you got to get up at 2 o'clock in the morning to get, to get ready to pack up your car to drive three and a half, four hours back to Shelby so you can start your 14-hour work day for your five days, and then it's rinse and repeat. Hold, hold on right quick. So we're, we're on to, button. We're on button. Hold yeah. on. Bro, so <laughs> let, let me interject right there, and I know exactly, exactly what you're going through. Now, I, I mean, I, I don't drive three and a half hours. That's... That's a bit that's a bit much and that's a big toll that you said to yourself like yo I'm 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 going to do it. I'm going to try and do it and and see if it works. Obviously it didn't work, but for me so of course I was over the road uh over the road for some time and all the companies that I driven for I was able to bring the truck home. No problem. Even even the two local companies that I've driven for, I was able to bring the truck home. Um, the company that I'm driving with now, okay, uh, I was bringing the truck home at one point, but uh, things changed at the terminal where the big boss man said, hey, you know, for the local dri- uh for the Guys that live locally, you know, that lives in the area, I'm going to need you guys to bring your trucks in and park them because, you know, I got my I got my guys on the uh, on the week uh, on the weekend, you know, servicing the trucks. So yeah. I, I was like, I was like, fuck, like for real, like, bro, like. I, I don't have a car like, you know, that's that's going to put a hindrance in me getting back and forth to work. You know, I, my son, he has a car, but I don't want to I, I, I don't want to ask my son. I don't want to put my son in a bind, you know, even though all he had to do yeah. is just drop me off one time and then pick me up another time. But, you know, him and yeah, his, it's the principle, though. right. It's the principle. Him and his fiance, they got they got other things to do. So. I'm over here like, fuck, <laughs> you know? So, unfortunately, I had to buy a car. I, I went, you know, at first I thought my, you know, I, I thought my, my, uh, my, what do you call it? My, uh, uh, my, what, what do you, uh, that credit. I thought my credit, you know, which was bad at the time, but. I didn't think I was going to be able to get a car. You know what I'm saying? I thought I would have to go to one of them buy here, play here places and all like that. But my son was yeah. like, yo, he was like, yo, dad, why don't you go in here and hit up Carvana? I was like, all right, I'll give them a chance. Bro, hit them up Friday, got the car on Sunday. 
<laughs> so I got Yeah, that. I've heard good things about Carvana. I got I got that out the way. So I, I got the car. Now it's uh, you know, my, my terminal is an hour and a half away from me. So, you know, and I, I okay. know I know what you go through because like if I do a te- when I do my Texas run, I don't get home on Saturday. I get home. I mean, I don't get home on Friday like I'm supposed to. I get home on Saturday, and they want me to be back out early Monday morning. You see what I'm saying? So I know exactly. Uh-huh. I know exactly what you're going through as far as you know. Uh, Getting ready, you know, getting ready, only having literally, only literally not even having a full day to yourself, bro. So I know exactly, exactly. what you, I, I know exactly what you're going through. And I know, um, I know Max came back at you in one of your video or in the video with the comment. And you even broke down the other time too. So go ahead and break down the other time that you tried. Well, see, no, now Mad Max is a great guy. He he knows his stuff. Outstanding guy. Um, very, very, very knowledgeable man. Um, so I, I don't want to knock him in any way, shape, or form. And he's not wrong. Right. I had so a, I had a conversation with him. He's a good guy. Yeah, you. He's not wrong. You can put up numbers on any fleet. So to deal with the issue that I had with not having home time. For whatever reason, I've, I've noticed Walmart does not advertise that they have all these different fleets. And most people don't hear about them until they find out from TikTok drivers mm-hmm. or they go through onboarding or get through a DC. Walmart has a number of different... I wish Walmart would actually advertise about a lot of the stuff that they don't. Because if they did, they'd get a lot more people. Um, but I chose to go on a 6 3 fleet because you're working six days on, three days off. But basically, right. by the time you hit your sixth day, working for Walmart, you're running your clock. So by the time you hit your sixth day, you are you have six, seven, maybe eight hours left on your 70. So mm-hmm. let's just say you start that morning at four o'clock in the morning, and you work six hours. You, you're getting off by 10 a.m. And that's what I was doing. I was getting on my sixth day, I was getting off by 10, 11 o'clock in the morning, you know, driving home. I was getting home by 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And that doesn't even count as your first off day. That gives you time to hang out with the family that afternoon. Y'all can eat dinner together, do whatever it was you want to do. And then you roll into your first off day and you have three days off back to back. And then you, then you go back into your work week. So now you start feeling like you actually have a home life. Okay. But on that same token... On that, on the flip side of that, um, that coin, though, you said that affected your money, though, when you when you did that. It it does. People say, you know, you have to play it right. You you do have to play the six. You can make good money on a six three. Um, basically, if you manage your hours a certain kind of way, this out in the third, you can. Um, how, however, you're not going to make as much as somebody on a regular five two schedule. Um, if a person on a 5 piece schedule makes as much as a person on a 6 three schedule makes, that means that person on the 5 piece schedule either wasn't being dispatched effectively, which happens, um, or they're, not, they're just not running hard enough. Because it's actually known throughout the company, if you're a 6 three driver, your ADP is actually slightly lower than what the average is. More, I want to make sure I'm saying that correctly. Because I feel like you're gonna somebody somebody's gonna nitpick, but they know what I'm saying. But there's those people in the world that nitpick, right? Because of the way the pay periods fall and how ADP is calculated, you might make more per day than some of these other guys who are on a uh, five C schedule, but your ADP is going to be lower, um, and, and just go from there. So you know, let's say you you make some random numbers. And I'm just going to do this off the top of my head. Let's say you're on a six three, and on that pay period, you only made uh, you made four 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 hundred dollars a day for eight days, because that's how many days are on that pay period. But let's say the person that's on a five two schedule made uh, three hundred and ninety dollars 
a day on a 5-2, if you do 390 times 10 versus 400 times 8, my math is not off in my head. I'm going by the seat of my pants right now because I'm, I'm busy working. That person that made 390 for 10 days still made more than the person that made 400 for 8 days. I don't know if you have a calculator next to you or not. Nah, but, um, I'm driving, that but nah, that's, that's actually, too much, you know that's no, too no, much I'm, brain I'm work. Gonna pull, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna pull, I'm actually pulling up my phone right now. So 390 times 10 days, that's $3,900. 400 times 8 days, $3,200. You see what I mean? Gotcha. That person on the 6 3 fleet technically made more money per day than the person that's on a regular 5-2. But because that person is on a 5-2 and worked the full 10 days that you have in the pay period, they technically made more, gross-wise. Gotcha. gotcha. Um, so that's what I was getting at in that video. Now, um, on top of that, if you're on a 5-2 schedule or a 5-2, 5-3, you can extend. So let's say you, uh, let's say you uh, want to extend and make a little bit of extra money. You can do that on a 5-2 or a 5-2, 5-3. On a 6-3, you can't. Once you hit your sixth day, that's it. You're done. Even if you, for some odd reason, you still have more time left over to run another day, you can't run another day. Well, I'm not going to let you. But they will if you're on the other schedule. Now, let me ask you this. So this is more opportunity. Let me ask you yeah. this, Raymond. If Walmart would have let you drive to, you know, take the truck home, would you would have stayed with him? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So you you would suggest uh, absolutely. you you and guys, listen, this is only his experience. It's not going to be for everybody. It might, you know, his experience is not going to roll over to everybody. So, if y'all come in the comment session talking about no, no, this, that and the third, don't do that. This is only his experience and what's and what's going on with him. So, uh, I don't think I don't think there's any Walmart driver that would be mad if Walmart let them take the truck home. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I know, I know. Like every, every truck driver loves that. We love being that. I left so I left home this morning, and the truck stop where I parked my truck is literally 1.3 miles from my front door. I woke up this morning, brushed my teeth, washed my face, grabbed my little bag. My truck is already packed up. My wife got up, drove me to the truck stop. We literally got to the truck stop in three and a half minutes. And I was in my truck ready to rock and roll. Like, who, who's not going to want that? Um, nobody, nobody would in their right mind would say, I don't want that. I don't want to have my own take-home truck that I don't have to share with anybody. No, no everybody would like their own take-home truck. Exactly. I understand why Walmart doesn't do it. <laughs> and from a business standpoint, um, from a business standpoint, what they're doing, you know, it, it makes sense. Um, Cause to make money, make a profit, you've got to cut costs in certain areas. If the, tr if you have a truck that's sitting at a store because the driver's on home time, right. that's an asset that's not making any money for the company. So I completely understand. It's just, it's just soaking up money at that point. It's not. It's not making any money while uh, soaking up money. So I mean, yes, I'm an advocate for everybody having to take home truck, but I also understand why they why Walmart doesn't. Raymond, man, thank you for uh, coming on to the show, man. I mean, this awesome, awesome conversation, bro. I mean, I'm just sitting back. I'm, you know, I'm driving right now, but it's like. I'm sitting back eating my popcorn right now, bro. <laughs> I mean, this this was a beautiful conversation, man. I I really appreciate linking up with you, man. Um, I appreciate you having me. Not a problem, bro. Uh, but I mean, I I I will I will say, uh, if there's anybody that's confused, Walmart is a good company to work for. Um, just like any company there is, um, there's there's this things about it that make you kind of scratch your head and then there are things about it that you know you really want to love that's every company in the country no company is perfect but by all means walmart is still an outstanding company to drive for
All and I, right. just because I left does not mean I hate it and it's not good. All right, all right, Walmart. Well, hey, uh, Raymond, man, how how can the people find you, bro? Tell tell the people how they can find you, man. So that underscore rigor underscore Gibbs. All right, all right, guys, go over there. Make sure you um, follow my and, guy. And my YouTube channel is literally my name, Raymond Keith Gibbs. I've had a YouTube channel since I since I actually got my CDL. And I've been documenting my entire trucking career on there. All right, bro. Hey, again, man, shout out to you, man. Big cheese got it locked, boy. Want you to love me all night? Yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet? Yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G and yeah, don't make a sound. And I want you to miss me when I'm not around. Come dive in my ocean. Dip on my pole. My love.